Scott. Um, Well, uh, Brian McClellan, who just published, um, his book is coming out um, this month, next month, one of my former students. Um, Brian exhibits a lot of the characteristics, and I could have told you all those years ago, he's probably the one that's going to make it. Um, his writing was good. There is that. Uh, but when I saw him a year later, I asked, what are you working on? And he had finished several books. And when I saw him a few years after that, I saw him at a convention where he was talking to editors and pitching a book I hadn't heard of yet. And then he was there the next year. And he was there the next year. Um, he did not give up. He went and wrote a lot of books. And he got published. He has a book coming out from, uh, from Orbit. Um, so there's that. Um, you know, Jancy was the same way. Uh, those are two that I can point to that are students that they got published. They just kept writing books. And that's really the thing that's going to probably distinguish a lot of them. Um, they keep writing. They love writing. They say, I'm going to do this. And it probably will take you 10 years. It takes about that much time. If you read Outliers, you know, Malcolm Gladwell's thing about that, or if you hear the 10,000 hours or whatnot, it takes that long to become an expert at something and make it work. The advent of, of, of digital publishing, allowing you perhaps to um, jump a few hurdles, um, and you're you know, cut in line, so to speak, um, and get things out faster, might speed that up for some of you. I don't know. Uh, Joe is not having a whole bunch of success doing that. You heard him talk about it. Uh, you know, and he's another one that's been very dedicated. Um, and, and working very hard. And so far, you know, not much at all uh, for him. Uh, a couple hundred bucks a month, I think he said when we asked him or whatever. But, um, you know, um, there, there is an element of luck to this. There is no denying there's an element of luck. Uh, you can improve your luck. You can work hard. You can continually keep writing. I have probably seen more students who had a lot of skill that I would point out and said, this is nearly publishable, who never went on to do anything because they stopped writing, then, um, then I've seen you know, people who got published. That's, that's the thing I see the most. I see that way more than I see the people who keep at it and then don't end up getting published. So, I, do you mind if I maybe shorthand for that question? But so you can go for it. Yeah, go for it. Don't disagree. Um, so I work as a journalist, mm -hmm. which is also you know, very, very competitive. Yes. Very Mm -hmm. The thing I've observed in my limited experience is that the people who make it don't quit and don't sell out. Mm. You don't get a job offer from a, some other place and say, oh, I can settle for that. You have to have that goal and you have to want it more than you want anything else. Because the people who keep trying and don't quit are the people that are actually going to quit one way or another. Yeah, Jane, you're right in the throes of this. Tell us about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then new book. Uh, I was just going to say, when I was living in England, I met an agent there, and she was talking to this big um, creative writing conference in Cambridge, and she just got up there and said, don't do this if you can think of anything else to do with your life. And we all like sat there looking at her like, well, and she says, I'm serious. If you can conceive of any other job and being happy at it, then you probably won't make it in this field because it's awful. <laughs> See, so yeah, people say that a lot. People say that a lot. I'm going to add the nicer side to it. I do think that there is a place for people who want to write as hobbyist, write a, a good book, you, and not make this, a career out of, out of this, particularly with the advent of digital publishing um, and things like that. Um, and everyone always told me things like that. They really did. Um, I took those. I, I just ignored all of that. I'm like, I want to write books. If what you want to do is write books, then who cares? Write the books. You should be doing this because you enjoy writing the books. And so if this, and you say, yeah, I can do that, I want to do that. I want to. If you're, if you're willing to die with 70 unpublished novels, then that's the type of person that sometimes makes it. 
you have to be willing to do it anyway. If that's what you want to do, then that's fine. Um, do know that, you know, like um, Dan is a, a direct um, a contradiction of that. He got a day job, one that took away from his writing because he had a family. His family was more important to him than writing was important to him. Um, otherwise, he could have gotten a, a dopey job like me, but his family would have had terrible standard of living. You know, he, he got married early and had kids. He still made it. Um, he made it, it took him, what, four or five years more than me? Um, he still, his first book that he sold was still his sixth book, Launchers was my sixth. It just took him a couple years longer to get there because he was doing all these other things. Um, so, yeah, um, ignore the people who say stuff like that. They're trying to scare you away and they have good reasons for doing it. But this is what you should be excited about. If you're excited about writing stories, then you've already won. Okay? And you pick your time frame. Don't let me pick your time frame for you. I'm just trying to say what would happen here. If what you say is, I want to write a 120,000 word book and I'm going to do it every three years because I have all this other stuff going on and that is fun to me and I want to have these and share them with my friends and maybe they'll sell and maybe they won't, who cares? Go ahead and add it up, find out how fast you write, set your goals and do it. And that is perfectly acceptable. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise, all right? Okay. So speaking in terms of family, I know you're an LDS person who's yes. married with children. How yes. do you make that work while also being a writing? Is it hard to not take work home? No, because, I mean, I'm lucky. Um, or if you would have come to me, you know, 10 years ago, I would have been like, ah, oh, man, all my friends are married and I'm not. But I didn't get married till I was 30. Elantris was already out. Mistborn was, um, was coming out. I was able to make a full-time living as a writer the second year of my marriage. Um, so... I mean, I can work 12 hours a day and spend four hours with my family, which is more than most dads get to spend with their family. That's a lot of time. So um, it's actually not that much a problem. I did have to do some of this compartmentalization that I was, I was talking about where when I'm done with my writing, it's time to be done. I don't go out with, you know, and, and, and keep working. I, I put it out. I play with the kids. I spend time with my wife. And then when they go to bed, I go back to work. Um, that's what I want to do. That's, that's fun to me. That's, that's enjoyable. But I did have to do that compartmentalization. I think it's healthy. So do you sometimes write 12 hours? Yeah, day? yeah, yeah, it's, that's not uncommon. Um, if I'm not doing something, if I'm not here, if I'm not doing something, I'm writing. I mean, what else am I going to be doing? I don't, you know, it's not like I'm going to sit down and turn on the TV. Um, their stories are worse than mine, so. Well, that's, that's one positive mm -hmm. side of having yeah. work and fun be the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, if I'm not spending time with my family, teaching my class, or, you know, hanging out with my friends, which I do do, um, I'll do that and things like that. But, you know, 12 hours is not uncommon for me to work, but it doesn't, it's not like I'm thinking, yeah, tw I'm going to, oh, this horrible 12 hour day. You know, I get up, I go to work, I get done, I go spend time with my family, everybody goes to bed, I go back to work and keep working on my stories, unless I have something else to do. Is that 12 hours that you're writing? No. Or are you no. like 12 hours in your workspace? I'm 12 hours in my workspace answering emails, writing, building outlines for something new, thinking about what I'm going to write, um, sitting and staring at the screen, tapping um, on my computer with one eyebrow cocked. That happens a lot. Um, stuff like that. It, uh, I, I work like kind of, the, uh, if you go look at what the modern, I've, I've noticed there's studies on it, like the modern programmer work. It's kind of like one of these things where it's like, done, some stuff done, some stuff done. Woo, big productive moment. Okay, we finished a chapter. Okay. It's, it's like that curve. Uh, people have done a lot of studies on it, um, and I, I follow that, that normal curve. So, um, Average output for me recently has been 3,500 words a day. Um, so I'm basically right around, you know, if, if you look at the actual writing time, I'm right around the 500 words an hour. Because of that four hours, there's going to be a lot of email and working on other stuff um, and, and whatnot. But, um, but yeah, um, yeah, 30, I, I think I was 38 last night. I actually record it when I'm working on a big book like this just to make sure that I'm, I'm hitting, you know, reasonable goals. Uh, the most I've ever, I, I can do 5,000 some days, but not consistently. Um, so... It'll be like I have a 5,000 day. It's like, you know, people talk about the well metaphor. And the well metaphor is a real one, where you dip things out of the well, and so the water level um, lowers. 
and then you kind of have to wait for things to kind of come back up before the creativity starts going again. And so it's really hard for me to, to get over 5,000 words in a day, unless I'm at the end of a story and I'm just kind of, everything's already there and it's momentum and things like that. So, so yeah. Okay, here and then there. And then on that same kind of a note, mm -hmm. um, like, have you ever, is there ever a situation where you know, you're sitting and you're just typing and like nothing is happening where you feel like it's not productive to just walk away and stop yeah. staring? Yeah, yeah, that does happen. So when do you decide to do that? I have a lot of practice of knowing my own, my own writing style. Um, most of the time um, when that's happening, I just, I need to like go to the gym or just, you know, get, get moving. Um, the, the 